What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tip for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about some tips for drawing on surfaces inside of SketchUp and for making sure that the edges that you're drawing are staying on those surfaces. So this is based on a question I got from a student in the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is my step-by-step -step, easy to follow course for learning SketchUp from start to finish. So not only do I have a number of different modules for teaching you how to learn SketchUp, up in a step-by-step -step fashion, but we also have a community forum where you can come to ask questions and we have live member calls where you can actually get on the calls and ask your questions. So we've got another one of those coming up tomorrow night. I'd love to see you on that call. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out the course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the more frustrating things that you can deal with inside of SketchUp is when you're trying to draw on a surface or something like that, and then you're drawing a whole bunch of things flat and then all of a sudden you draw something and it's up off the surface and you didn't know that you were off the surface and then when you rotate down it looks something like this right so that can be very frustrating um, because it means you're gonna have to go back in and fix a bunch of stuff and um, your faces won't close in right if I was to draw a face across here it's not gonna work because your edges aren't coplanar so it's just kind of a frustrating situation so I wanted to talk through a few quick things that you can do to make sure that you're drawing on surfaces so that you don't don't have that issue. So first things first, um, the very first thing that you need to understand is you need to understand the point inference types inside of SketchUp. So you want to pay attention to the point inference. That's going to be the point that shows up next to your pencil tool inside of SketchUp. And specifically, you want to focus on this inference right here. So the on face is an indicator that you're drawing something on the face that your mouse is over. So it's basically this little blue diamond. And so if we were to jump into SketchUp and we were to draw, notice how if I tap the L key to activate the line tool, as soon as I move my mouse over this face, I get the inference that says this is going to be drawn on face. So you can see right here that any point that I set while that's showing up is going to be located on that face. So if I move my mouse in any direction, as long as this has the little diamond on it, I can know that I'm drawing on the face. And so notice how, for example, that sometimes that kind of goes away, right? So like, for example, if I move my mouse this way right here, this is actually on the blue axis. It's not on the surface. So if I was to click through here, for example, and draw some edges, and then I kind of got in a hurry and I moved my mouse, maybe like this direction right here. So maybe I got like close and I wanted to set a point right here. Notice how the diamond isn't showing up on the surface. Well, what that means is that means that a point that I just drew is not on that face and it's not going to be flat. So the first thing you can do is make sure that when you're drawing on a surface like this, that the blue diamond is showing up to indicate that you're drawing on face. So, and this is something that you can pay attention to with things like the arc tool as well. So if I draw an arc, so if I tap the A key, single click, move my mouse, and then click again, notice how I can move my mouse so that this is on the surface right here. But sometimes this will inference to like the blue axis right here. And so you can tell that you're not drawing on the surface. So when you're drawing on the surface like this, look for that blue diamond in here to indicate to you that you're drawing on surface. That's going to work with things like um, curves as well. So the second thing that you can pay attention to is if you're not drawing with curves, then what you can do is you can use inferences in order to make sure that you're drawing on a surface as well. So for example, if I was gonna draw a bunch of stuff in here that's just gonna follow along the axes, I wanna pay attention to the axes that I'm drawing along. So the line inferences in this case. And so notice how when I'm drawing in here, as long as I'm drawing along the red or green directions, I can know that I'm drawing on a surface here. So if I can just try to draw along those inferences like this, then I can know that I'm basically drawing something flat on a surface. And one thing to be aware of is if you hold the shift key with one of those in here like this, then you can inference in any direction. You can move your mouse in order to inference to a certain point or something like that, and you can know that what you're drawing is flat. So you want to make sure to draw along these inferences as much as possible. So in addition to trying to draw along the inferences, you can go one step further 
and let's say I was to activate the line tool and click, you can actually tap the left or right arrow keys to lock the line that you're drawing to that inference. So it's like holding shift, except now I don't have to hold anything down. So if you wanna use those in order to force your lines along a surface like this, you can just tap the left or right arrow keys and then you can definitely know that you're drawing on the surface because you're locked in that direction. So the only way that you can draw is in that direction. So another tip that I have is if you're ever drawing something that's standing up, so let's say I wanted to draw like a profile like this, right? Um, so if I wanted to draw a profile, if I just try to draw this in here like this along these axes, especially if my view angle is kind of messed up a little bit, notice how it's really easy to accidentally draw along the green axis, for example, instead of along the blue axis when you're trying to draw something down. And so if you do that like this, and then you rotate out of this direction, notice how even though it kind of looked like I was drawing everything straight up and down, I really wasn't um, because this was kind of jumping to those other inferences. And so one thing you can do in order to make that a little bit better is you wanna make sure that you use a view angle like this that's gonna be very pronounced. So something where you don't accidentally pick up that blue as opposed to the green, right? So you don't wanna do this kind of like I did it where you've got this like 3D view where it jumps back and forth between green and blue really quickly. What you can do instead is you can rotate down into a view like this one. And then it's a lot easier to see that you're on the blue or red axes um, and that you're not accidentally gonna pick up the green axis because for, the gr for you to go along the green axis, you'd have to move your mouse to like kind of a crazy location, right? You'd have to move your mouse like over here. So you're not gonna accidentally do that from this view. Notice how you're not accidentally inferencing to that green axis. And so this is a great way to use your view in order to make sure that you're drawing on a flat plane like this. And then if I was to do this and then close this in, you can know that this is going to be flat. An easier way to do that is I usually draw what I call a canvas. Um, other people might call it like an inference plane or something like that. But basically what that would be is let's say that I was to activate the rectangle tool right here and I'm gonna tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. But notice how I can use this in order to draw a flat plane like this. Well now, if I was to come in here and draw on this, this is gonna work even better because it's just automatically inferencing to that face. So I have a face to draw along. So that way I can just use those on face inferences like this in order to quickly draw something on the face using this uh, inference plane or canvas that I've created. And so a lot of the time when you're doing this, what you're trying to do is you're trying to trace along an image, right? So if I was to try to trace along this image, for example, one way to do it is that I would come in here and I would use the arc tool in order to trace along this face. And a lot of the time, this is where you start running into issues because you're really paying attention where your points are, but you're not necessarily paying attention to like the direction that you're drawing. So let's say for example, that we had a curve in here and you accidentally picked up this blue axis, right? Like this. That can be problematic because if I rotate down, you can see how I accidentally drew this curve that's kind of up instead of along the face. And so you can use all the tips that we were just talking about, but another tip is to use an extension called Fredo Spline. So Fredo Spline is an extension from Fredo 6 that you can download from the Sketchication Extension Warehouse. It is a paid extension. Um, there's a free trial version. There's also a perpetual license option, or there's a temporary license if you want to do that. I, I'm not really sure why you would do that instead of just going with the perpetual license, but there's options in there to do that. But this tool from Fredo 6 is basically a curve generation tool that allows you to quickly create curves in here. And so in this case, I probably want to use the local fit spline. Um, there might be a better option in here. We're going to go with the local fit spline right here. But if I click on this Z button, notice how I get this little uh, blue box in here. Well, that blue box is just an indicator that I am locked to that Z plane. So there's no way that I can accidentally do anything other than drawing on this face because we're locked to the Z axis, meaning it's not allowing SketchUp to go up and down with this. It's literally saying, okay, your Z is set. And so now you're just gonna set your XY points 
in here. So this is a tool that makes it a lot easier to do things like tracing out these complicated shapes um, without ever having to worry about accidentally picking up that additional um, that additional up down movement. It's going to be locked to this surface no matter what you do um, because that's a function built in to the extension. All right, so then bonus tip. Um, so everything we've talked about up to this point has been how to draw along flat surfaces. But there's also a free extension from Fredo 6 you can download called Tools on Surface, which I will link to in the notes down below, that allows you to draw on curved surfaces. So it's basically a tool set for draw, drawing different edges and shapes on those curved surfaces. And so the way that that's going to work is I'm going to open that up, and that has a tool set for drawing lines on surfaces. So notice how if I draw on this surface right here, it's actually going to find the straight line across this curved surface like this. So you can use this to draw lines on here. You can also use it to draw things like circles. So if I wanted to draw a circle on this surface, for example, I could do that. Um, you could draw other shapes, and you can also do offsets on surface. So you can use this to actually offset something off like this. And then we're getting a little far into the weeds, but you could use an extension like joint push pull in order to actually joint push pull or push pull the curved surfaces that's in here. But if you are looking to draw on curved surfaces like this, Tools on Surface is a great extension to try. So hopefully those tips are going to help you working on surfaces inside of SketchUp. If you do want to check out the live calls in the course, I'd love to see you there. Our next call is going to be tomorrow night, so you can check that out through the link on this page. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.